Hello and welcome to this 101 lab. In this lab we will learn how to perform traffic sniffing using Wireshark. We worked with Wireshark in our lab on network sniffing, lab 17, but that was only scratching the surface. Wireshark is, for a reason, the most used network sniffing or traffic analysis and packet capture tool in the industry. All these different names are used interchangeably, but if we want to be specific about it, network sniffing allows us to capture packets, which then allow us to analyze traffic. For this lab, we'll be needing Kali Linux and Metasploitable in a virtual machine. As always, I prefer to start Wireshark, or any other tool, through the command line interface, rather than from the GUI, so let's type Wireshark in the command line. Let's clear this up, Wireshark, and start. Now, after selecting the interface, we want to eavesdrop on, generate some traffic. My suggestions are to try and communicate with HTTP, HTTPS web servers, and at least FTP servers, though other servers are okay too. To that end, we'll be using a Metasploitable virtual machine as it contains an FTP and an HTTP server, as well as many others. Some protocols, especially the ones that were designed back in the day, before there was this much awareness in terms of computer security, transfer data in plain text. FTP and HTTP are such protocols, so all communication done through them is plainly visible to anyone listening in on the traffic. Let's check that out in Wireshark. So let's generate some FTP traffic by logging into Metasploitable's FTP server with credentials MSF admin for both username and password. So let's open up a new tab, FTP. This is the address, MSF admin, MSF admin. And let's see, help, ls, and we want to get Seychelles. Okay, then we type bye. That's enough FTP traffic. Easily the most powerful feature of Wireshark is its filter. If we input this filter, IP address is that of Metasploitable and FTP traffic, we will easily see right now user MSF admin, password MSF admin, and then LS, which was list. We got this. So let's analyze this in a slightly more convenient fashion. User MSF admin, password system, command list, this is the IP address, and this is what was downloaded. So everything is in plain text, very easy to analyze. So once we're done with that, we're going to continue without saving. Okay. To check out HTTP traffic, we'll go to the following URL. So we are here. Try logging into web application using any credentials. Let's say test, test, and it's not going to work, of course. So we go back to Wireshark and we stop the capture so it doesn't get overflown with way too many packets. Now let's head over to Wireshark and input the filing as the filter post. Here we go. We see that there was a post to this URL. Let's follow it through the TCP stream. And very quickly, we can control F, test. Now that's not what we want. Here it is. User test, password test, logging, stay in SSL mode. So we see that the username and password that we attempted to log in with is clearly visible in plain text. You can easily notice Wireshark's ability to filter packets in almost every way imaginable. The sky and your imagination are the limit with this tool. If you combine Wireshark with DNS spoofing, R poisoning and SSL stripping attacks, possibly even some social engineering such as a watering hole attack or website cloning and credential harvesting, you can even get credentials intended for HTTPS websites. In addition to that, if you're on a wireless connection that you know the encryption password for, you can strip the encryption of packets traversing the network by utilizing the known password. See if you can find ways how to do this on your own. And that brings us to the end of this lab.